Hello there, my fellow cat people, and welcome back to some battle mechs of Battletech. I'm saying some, because today is one of those rare occasions when we're gonna go over not one, but two battle mechs. I would also like to thank the subscriber who sponsored this particular topic, as he's also the one who sponsored about six other battle mech videos. The topic of today is cats. Not the cute tabby kind, but the kind which levels your neighborhood. Although they are not as similar as their name would suggest, they both have cat in the name, and they are also designed by the same clan, so I thought I could put them in the same video. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the Nova Cat and the Shadow Cat. I'm your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Nova Cat is the heavier of the two, massing at 70 tons, a top speed of 65 km an hour, and a whooping cost of 17.7 .7 million sea bills. Now, before you make fun of it, yes, the Nova Cat is used by the clan Nova Cat. But the clan Nova Cat doesn't use just Nova Cat battle mechs. Following the defeat of clan Nova Cat at Tukaid, the clan began talks with the Draconis Combine. Khan Severin LaRue, at the same time, ordered the design and construction of a new heavy Omnimech. This would be built to protect the clan both militarily and spiritually, and the design was christened the Nova Cat, imbuing it with the spirit of the clan itself. In 3059, when the Inner Sphere launched its own counterattack on the Smoke Jaguar Occupation Zone, the clan Nova Cat's decision was at hand. The Smoke Jaguars would find themselves facing the Clan Nova Cat units as part of the new Starlink army. And at the forefront of the Nova Cat units was their new Nova Cat mech. Impressed by Clan Jade Falcon's Night Geyer, Nova Cat scientists reduced the speed of the Nova Cat to free a massive amount of pod space for weapon allocation, giving the Nova Cat its unique look. Thus, the standard configuration is an all long range energy payload which, although allows the Nova Cat to stay in the battle for a longer period of time, means that the pilot has to alternate in firing the weapons to avoid overheating. Two ERPPCs are the mech's main weapons, backed up by another three ER Lodge lasers. The Nova Cat was first produced on the Nova Cat world of Barcella in clan space. In early 3059, production began in the new Iris Alpha plant in the Inner Sphere. First seeing service with the Nova Cats during Operation Bulldog, several of these mechs were seized by the Smoke Jaguars when they captured a malfunctioning Nova Cat dropship. Sources in the periphery persistently report an odd looking mech resembling the Nova Cat, and it is possible that one or more of these machines may have become part of the arsenals of other clans which accepted Smoke Jaguar refugees. Which brings us to its configurations, and oh boy, there's a lot of them. Configuration A is armed with four ER Lodge lasers linked to a targeting computer for extra accuracy. Additional heatsinks keep the heat in check, while jump jets can lift the mech up to 120 meters at a time. Configuration B deviates from the primary greatly, as it is a missile boat rather than anything else, equipped with a whooping six LRM-15s. A pair of ER medium lasers provide short range firepower. Configuration C is equipped with two Ultra AC-5s, one LB-5X autocannon and two large pulse lasers. This version is very potent against aircraft. Configuration D is similar to the C, but it is equipped with an LB-10X autocannon and three heavy large lasers. The extra heatsinks are still overtaxed by the heavy lasers, although a targeting computer increases accuracy. Configuration E is close to the B, being equipped with a total of four ATM-9s with two tons of ammo per launcher and one large pulse laser for pinpoint accuracy. Configuration F was developed during the Jihad, utilizing the development of improved jump jets for tactical advantage. It has six of these improved jump jets fitted to the side torsos. It is armed with a couple of large pulse lasers in the right arm, while the left arm has three medium pulse lasers. To handle all the heat, it has been fitted with an extra three double heatsinks. 
To improve accuracy, a targeting computer was added with an ECM suite to protect it from enemy electronics. Configuration G was also developed during the Jihad, but developed for fire support and anti-infantry. It has been given a targeting computer and an ECM suite. For the fire support role, it has three Artemis IV guided LRM-20 launchers with 5 tons of ammo. For anti-infantry, it has 8 AP Gauss rifles split between the two torsos, sharing 1 ton of ammo. Configuration H was introduced during the Dark Age. It has a massive LB-20X autocannon, a medium pulse laser, and two improved heavy large lasers. 19 double heatsinks are partnered with three coolant pods to keep the heat under control. Finally, a supercharger allows it to reach speeds of up to 86 km an hour. Configuration I has an improved heavy large laser, two medium pulse lasers, and a TSEMP cannon. For those of you who don't know, TSEMP stands for Tight Stream Electromagnetic Pulse, and this thing has one in each arm. 21 double heatsinks keep the heat manageable. The second of today's designs is a bit smaller but no less impressive. It is a medium at 45 tons, with a top speed of 97 km an hour and a rounded cost of 11.8 million seabells. The Shadowcat is a heavily armed and maneuverable medium Omnimech, developed by the Novacats to supersede the Ice Ferret in the early 31st century during preparations for Operation Revival. The use of the Shadowcat would spread to other clans since its introduction, most notably the annihilated clan Smoke Jaguar, as well as clans Wolf, Cloud Cobra, Diamond Shark, Fire Mandrill, and Steel Viper. It was first used against the Inner Sphere forces during the Battle of Lufian, and it was quite successful. It would be subsequently deployed by the clans against Comstar during the Battle of Tukaid. Curiously, the Shadowcat is one of the few invasion-era clan mechs to lack a separate designation by the Inner Sphere. Every Inner Sphere pilot who encountered this thing before the Battle of Tukaid was killed in action, and Comstar was informed of its designation before that battle, which resulted in both sides using the same name, the Shadowcat. Production of this thing in the clan homeworlds would falter in the years after the Great Refusal, and stopped altogether around the time of the Wars of Reaving. This was one of the several older designs that was being phased out of manufacture in the homeworlds. The reason for that were not explicitly given, but it is possible that the mech's association with the exiled Novacats at this point did play a significant role in the decision to phase it out. In the Inner Sphere, however, they don't care about that. Despite its historical association, the Shadowcat remains a highly successful design, which has seen continued production by the Novacats themselves well into the Dark Age period. The right to produce it were acquired by the rechristened Clan Seafox, who continue selling it to other clans and even the Inner Sphere military. This particular Omnimech makes use of weight saving technologies in the form of an endosteel internal structure, an XL engine, and 7 tons of ferrofibrous armor. All of these put together allow the Shadowcat to employ more pod space than the Ice Ferret, but at the expense of speed. To counteract this, the base chassis employs a jump jets which can vault at up to 180 meters in a single bound, and the MIMER accelerated signal circuitry which enable it to move up to 130 kph in a burst. The prime configuration has a Gauss rifle, allowing it to easily defeat smaller opponents often before they even get into range. A couple of ER medium lasers back up the rifle and together they are able to deal almost as much damage as the Gauss rifle itself, but at a shorter range. An active probe gives it the ability to detect hidden units, making it a capable scout. Which brings us to the variants, where, very similarly to the Novacad, there are a lot of them. Configuration A uses a couple of ER large lasers to gain long-range potency. It does retain the prime configuration's active probe, but instead carries a Streak SRM-6 for backup. It also utilizes three extra double heatsinks to keep the heat under control. Configuration B is a fusion of long-range weapons and a scouting system, emphasizing indirect firepower. It has two Artemis IV-guided LRM-15s, 
as well as a couple of ER medium lasers for point defense. It does retain the active probe and also adds an ECM suite to the electronic package. Configuration C has a couple of ATM6s and three medium lasers. It does carry enough ammunition to make full use of the flexibility of the advanced tactical missile system. A NARC missile beacon helps the colleague's missiles to target an enemy unit too. Configuration D has an ER large laser and an extra double heating in the right arm, while the left arm carries a pair of medium pulse lasers. The left torso has two machine guns, an ER small laser, and another medium pulse laser. To capitalize on the damage inflicted by the close range weapons, the torso also mounts a Streak SRM 6. One ton of ammo is provided for the machine guns and a missile launcher. Configuration F is a Dark Age variant, carrying a TSEMP cannon, an ERPPC, and a Streak SRM 6. Configuration H makes its presence known at long range via the use of an LRM-20 with Artemis IV. A targeting computer-assisted heavy large lasers also packs a wallop, although four extra double heatsinks are used to keep the heat in check. Configuration I has an ER medium pulse laser and an improved heavy medium laser in each arm. These are all linked into a targeting computer. Each side torso also carries a Streak SRM-6 with one ton of ammo. Configuration J is a model of advanced Gauss technology, mounting a total of six AP Gauss rifles and a massive HAG-20. It does use the light probe to scout for enemy infantry. Configuration M is a quick striker, mounting a large pulse laser in each arm and an ER medium laser in its side torso. Three extra heatsinks help mitigate all the heat produced by all these weapons. Finally for today, the alternate configuration T has an Ultra AC-10 in the right arm with two tons of ammo, and a medium pulse laser mounted in the left arm and another in the right torso. An active probe is mounted in the left torso to find hidden foes. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Novacat designs, the Shadowcat and the Novacat battle mechs for today. Battletech does seem to like naming mechs after cats for some reason. We had the Mad Cat, and now we have the Shadow Cat and the Nova Cat. There's also the Cougar, which is technically still a cat, and probably others which I can't remember right now. Although they do have different looks and roles, the mechs of today are still powerful and useful, in my opinion. I mean, the one two punch capability of the Prime Nova Cat does seem even OP to me. Anyway, what about you? Are either of these among your favorite battle mechs? Did you ever use them or fight against them? Do share your thoughts or experiences with them in the comments below. Thanks a lot for watching and have an awesome healthy day. This is GDN signing out.